the truth is spoken about many different ways, although it is one truth. It's the same truth, right? And you should understand that as you begin to practice meditation, and over time after you establish a meditation practice, right, if you're doing this correctly and you, and you have an established meditation practice and you've been doing it for a while, hmm, the awareness that you're experiencing when you move attention away from thinking and you're being aware of the body breathing, that awareness that's aware of the body breathing, right, goes back into the background when you're done with the practice and you go back into thought mode, don't you? Yeah, you go back into thought mode. You, go, you start living again in the, in the thought world, right? So, but if you keep practicing the practice over time, this experience of yourself as awareness that only lasts for brief moments when you're doing the practice and then your attention goes back to thinking, you know, that, uh, that experience you're having of that awareness, it's only there for brief moments. If you do the practice over time consistently, what will happen is during your everyday ordinary life, all of a sudden you'll be, oh, awareness will show up. Right? Because now you've been spending some time with it, right? You've been identifying yourself with awareness instead of the personality. So if you do this consistently over time, you'll be going through your everyday life and all of a sudden awareness will show up and you'll notice that now you're aware of the thinking that's happening, but you're not being the thinker of those thoughts. Yes? So we become aware of our awareness. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, it's the awareness becoming aware of itself. Yeah, because there is no you to become aware of it. Yeah, the teaching, the, the, the heart of the teaching, I'll just say, that don't worry about if you don't get any of this, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I'll say it, right? The heart of the teaching, the essence of the teaching, which is found in the Heart Sutra, is that the self that you've been being the self that you take yourself to be, whether you think it's a physical body or a personality, does not exist. Does not exist. Yeah. That sounds weird to most people, right? That sounds, oh, that can't be so. I, how can you tell me that what I've been being doesn't exist? I can tell you that because I can ask you to take a look, right? One of the things that the teachers tell students is don't believe anything I say, that would make you a fool, right? That's why you're in trouble now, <laughs> because you believe shit that other people said. So don't believe what I'm saying, but look for yourself. If you think that you are something and I'm telling you that something you think you are doesn't exist, find out. Don't just believe what I'm saying, find out. Look for it. If you think there's a self somewhere where you are, look for it. That's called self-inquiry, you know? One of the most famous teachers gave that as a practice. Practice self-inquiry. Start looking for the you you take yourself to be. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, the, you may take it, you may think it's the body, you may think it's the body, but most people know the truth about the body. You know, if you talk about the body, most people say my body. They don't say, they don't say I am the body, they say my body, like my car. You know, like my hat, like, you know, my house, my body. So most people know that if I can see the body, I can't be the body, right? Anything you can see can't be you, right? Yeah. And you can see the body. You can see it in form and you can see it in sensation, right? You can feel it and you can see it, right? But you're not being it. My hand's not looking at me, I'm looking at my hand, right? So that's one identity that you're not, right? So what's left? The personality is left, right? So you take yourself to be a personality. What is that? What is the personality that you take yourself to be? If you really examine it, the only evidence you have for being a personality is the voice in your head, isn't it? Don't you think that because that voice is there that I must be that and that's my personality talking to me, right? Well, again, self-inquiry. If you do an inquiry into that and you start looking to see, okay, if that voice is me, then why do I have to look to see what it says to know what I think? That's an inquiry, right? I'm inquiring into this, right? If I take the voice to be me, right, then I should know what that voice is going to say before it speaks, shouldn't I? Because I am the voice. I'm the one that's saying what that's saying, right? 
But that's not the way it is. If I ask you what you think, you don't know until you look to see what the voice tells you, right? So how can it be you? How can it be you? How can it be you if when it's time to go to sleep, you're ready to go to sleep and the voice isn't? If it's you, just turn it off and go to sleep. But you can't. If it's you, would you say anything terrible about yourself if it's you? And yet that voice in your head does talk about you, doesn't it? It puts you down. It says negative things about you. So if that voice is you, you're truly crazy, given what you say about yourself and about life and about everybody else. And you're truly crazy because you can't stop thinking at night to go to sleep. You're truly crazy because you think things that get in your way of being able to be happy. You think things that get in your way of being satisfied. You think things that cause you to feel anxious. You think things that cause you to feel depressed. So if you're that voice, you're in deep shit. <laughs> but you've been experiencing the suffering that comes from thinking you are that voice all along, haven't you? Yeah. Whenever something happens that's not the way it's supposed to be, you suffer. Because the voice in your head says, that's not right. <laughs> right? It says it all the time. The voice in your head is a judge and evaluation operation. It's working all the time to judge and evaluate everything. You know? If you just walk around this gym, and you pay attention to what the voice in your head's saying, watch it judge everybody and everything that's happening. Watch it. It's doing it all the time. And the good news is it's not you. The good news is it's not you. So you don't have to worry about how bad you feel about how judgmental you are, <laughs> because you're not judgmental. Your mind is a judgment machine. You're not your mind. You're the witness of your mind. And if you practice meditation, you can begin to experience the freedom and the relief that you experience by knowing that you're the awareness instead of the voice in your head. You're aware of the voice. You're not the voice. You're the awareness. And through meditation, you can practice having a direct experience of being that awareness by sitting still, by being calm, by paying attention, and just noticing that when I'm aware of the body breathing and I am not thinking, there's a possibility here that's not here when I'm thinking. And the possibility that's here, that's not here when I'm thinking, is I am now paying attention to the awareness of the body breathing. All I have to do now is take one step to experience my true nature. When I'm in the thinking, when I'm in the thinking mode, there is no way for me to experience my true nature because the thinking is happening in front of it. The thinking is happening, it's, it's covering it over, you see. Uh, but in meditation, I'm learning to move my attention away from that, and now I'm experiencing the awareness of the body breathing. Now there's only one step I have to take to experience my true nature, and that is that that awareness that's aware of the body breathing, that's me. That's your true nature. And it's not a self. There is no self. Awareness is not a self. Why would I say it's not a self? Because the awareness that you are is not personal. It's not personal. It's the same awareness that 8 billion people have. It's literally and exactly the same awareness that all 8 billion people on the planet are experiencing right now. It's the same as that. Right? So there's no self, it's impersonal. It's a collective reality. Awareness is a collective reality. It's being experienced at the same time by eight billion people. So there is no separate self. Right? All there is is awareness and it's not personal, yes. For most of us, it, the way things occur for most of us is that we consider ourselves to be separate from all other human beings and separate from this, right? No, it's separate. That's separate self, right? The truth is there is no such thing as a separate self. It's an illusion. It's a dream that you're experiencing. And at the end of that statement, she said that I am everything. I am everything. Now, you know, that, that when you hear that, and when your orientation is the personality and you hear that, it sounds like craziness, doesn't it? I am everything. You know, and how can I experience... See, see the thing is when... When I first heard that, I thought, oh, man, I'll never be able to experience that. <laughs> you know what I mean? How can I? Go? That's so foreign to me, the idea that I am everything. You know what I mean? But you see, all you have to do to experience that you are everything is to experience that you are consciousness. 
and everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. Yeah, you can't think the truth. It's impossible. <laughs> I thought it was a ham sandwich. No, but you can't, you can't think the truth, and you can't learn the truth. You cannot learn the truth. This is not a class about the truth. This is not a cla an academic class about the truth where you could come and take notes about the truth so you can study the truth and then you'll know the truth. No, it doesn't work like that. That's information. The way this works, this is not something you can learn or study. This is something you are. You don't have to learn or study what you are. All you have to do is start noticing it. Just start noticing it. And if you start noticing it, you'll start noticing that there's a possibility to experience yourself in such a way where you can stop acting like a jerk. <laughs> I found this out in my relationship with my wife, right? Uh, and you find this out in your relationships. I think that's where it shows up the, the, the most. You find out in your relationships, right? Because in your relationships is where you start to experience, I used to think I was separate from everybody and therefore I had to be on the lookout for anybody that's trying to hurt me. I used to think I was separate from everybody so there I had to be on the lookout for anybody that's threatening me that might you know, hurt me physically or hurt me emotionally, right? But when you start waking up, you start realizing there's nothing to protect. As it says in the beginning of the Course in Miracles, the, the summary statement for the whole course, right? That what is real cannot be threatened, and what is not real doesn't exist. That's the, whole, that's the truth right there. What is real cannot be threatened. What you are cannot be threatened. What you are is awareness itself. It has no form and it doesn't exist in time. How's it going to be threatened? How's it going to be threatened? So if you practice this consistently over time, you start experiencing that the reality, what you are, cannot be threatened. And because that's the case, you no longer respond to the idea that you can be threatened. And therefore, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they say something that stimulates a reaction on your part where you feel threatened and you feel like you now have to counter what they said to protect yourself, right? Because you're now more awake, because you have awareness now available to you, you don't do it. You don't do it because you don't have to protect yourself from anybody or anything, right? You can just relax. You can just relax. Nothing can happen. Yeah. Is it true, though, that the body can be threatened? Of course. Obviously. Eh? And therefore, I strongly recommend you protect it. <laughs> but you are not the body, you see? Yeah. So you can, you can protect the body, you can take care of the body, and you should take care of the body, right? Because it's just like your car. You take care of your car because you want transportation, right? If you don't take care of this, you won't have transportation either. <laughs> this is your transportation while you're in the time-space reality. When you lose this, you can't continue to be in the time-space reality. You can only be in the awareness reality, right? But we're not dealing with that. That'll take care of itself. We're dealing with this where you are in the time-space reality, and you do have this piece in the game, right? And so you do have to be related to it. You do have to identify with it, even though you know it's not what you are, because that's the game everybody's playing. You do have to identify with your personality, even though it's not what you are, because that's the game you're playing. So you identify with your personality as a means, as a conventional means of participating in the world. You identify yourself as a personality. But if you know that's not what you are, you don't have to do all the suffering the personality does. So we are everything and everybody. Yeah. yeah. But only as an experience, not as a concept. Right. So what you just said isn't true as a thought, experience, or concept, and it's true. No, it's not true as a thought or a concept. It's true as an experience. That's what this is about. Meditation is about having the experience of the truth, not just the concept about it. 